FM21 loves to rub it in, doesn't it? They've given us a great out goalkeeper for our under-19s called Ludwig Dreyer, the exact same name as the midfielder the board sold against my will in the last transfer window. Well, the latest transfer window has now firmly slammed shut and the good news is I managed to hold on to all of our prize talents even though we were getting some significant bids for players like Matt's Nessa, but we held on to the lot of them. And I tell you what, it wasn't only the players that were attracting some attention. After more than six seasons, finally, someone's came and offered an interview to old Muggins here, and it was our city rival's Tromser that made me the offer. I turned it down. I've got a job on here at Troms, darling. And in today's episode of Sub-Zero Hero, we're going to see how we've been getting on. So how have things been going? So-so, I would say. Our position in the table looks fine. Look up. We're only five points off the playoffs. Look down. We're only two points ahead of Brian, who sit in that relegation playoff position. And we know how that turned out last time we were at this level. The problem? We can't draw any games. We've won some, but we've lost plenty as well. After our opening day 2-0 win against Volarenga, well, we came crashing back down to earth pretty quickly with a 3-0 defeat against Tam Cam on the TV and then a 3-1 defeat in the game after that. So we tweaked the tactic for a game against a non-league team in the cup. We only scraped past them 2-1, but we stuck with the tactic and in the next game we beat Yerv 4-0. And I thought we might be onto something, although three of the goals in this game came from set plays and that can sometimes mislead you as to how well a new tactic is playing. And so it proved in the next game we were terrible and we lost to all Kisser, who were bottom of the table at the time. So we went back to the old faithful 4-4-2. We played a team from the division below us. We beat them 3-0. And in the next game against Kongsvinger, we won 2-1 and looked pretty comfortable in this game. But then we got knocked out of the cup playing the 4-4-2. And then we played Haugesson and we lost 3-2 to them. So we tweaked it again and we lost. So we went back to the 4-4-2 and we lost. And I've been playing around with the tactic probably too much. But none of the tactics we've been playing have really been creating chances. Even when we've racked up a bit of an XG, it's been through creating 20 poor chances during a game rather than five or six really good ones. So then I tweaked it once more. We went to a 4-3-3 and we managed to beat Arundel. And then we played the 4-3-3 again and we lost to Brian. So then I tweaked it one final time for our last game against Frederikstad. I went back to a 4-2-3-1, but with a lot different roles and duties than I had when I was playing it earlier on in the season. And in this latest game, we looked convincing. Frederikstad were above us in the league at the time. We created 23 chances, got 10 of them on target, and our team played well. If Hartvigsen could have tucked away a couple more of these chances, well, things might have been even more convincing. And it means that we are doing away with the 4-4-2 on a short-term basis, and we switch to this three attacking midfielders behind a lone front man, but it's done okay. It does mean that Hugo Emper is taking a little bit of a hiatus from the team, because although he continues to train beyond your wildest dreams, he doesn't play well. He's got two goals this season, one of them a penalty that I gave him out of pity in our last game just to try and get him scoring again. Harfixon's played better, although he's only got six goals in 12. He trains well as well. The player who's not the best in terms of his attributes, but he's really playing well in this system, is little Tony Berg. Not great at passing, not great at vision, Strength is pretty poor, concentration is not anything to write home about, but he takes a mean set play and he's created some goals and he's scored one as well. But the player who's training the best at the moment is still only 15, Martin Dusund Ibsen, who I was a little bit sceptical about whether he'd be able to play in this midfield, but his passing is already up to 7, his vision is up to 11, he is training absolutely fantastically. He has got lots of attributes now that have now gone over 15, like his stamina, balance, determination. You never know. If we keep training him on for the next two or three years, 
he could be another little starlet. He's not having the best of time because, well, I've played him in some of those pretty heavy defeats and he's only scored in the low sixes. But hopefully, if we can get a bit of a run of form together, it might allow him to continue his improvement. This guy's a bit of a success story as well. Ola Christian Jensen, who has now started to train an awful lot better since his mentoring group changed and his determination has shot up from a 6 to an 8. We've also had reports that he's improved his focus and his professionalism as well. And now he is starting to turn into a midfielder that we can work with. So, we're going to send the boys out today. We're going to keep little tiny Emper on the bench. We're going to start with Hartfixon up front. And Shurnison has been playing well in the last couple of games too. And we're going to see whether our new formation can carry on looking as convincing as it did in the last game as we take on the team that are bottom of the table. So we are underway. Let's see how this formation gets on. We're also using the same one with the under-19s because they've not had a great start to their season either. But for different reasons, they're drawing nearly every game. They are just lower mid-table in the under-19s Premier Division because they keep getting 1-1 draws in virtually every game they play. So we switched their formation as well and they managed to win their last game too. So fingers crossed. This might make us a little bit more of an attacking threat because with the 4-4-2, we were very, very long and we were huffing and puffing and creating lots of shooting chances, but not very clear-cut ones. As Shurnison cuts inside from his left wing and cracks one against the bar. We've not made a great start to this game, have we? Three shots, three on target, but it looks like they've been long rangers and we're going to... Try and encourage the team on to do a little bit better. We've got five minutes to the break. And we could do with a goal before the interval just to settle the old nerves. You'll see we're trying to be, trying to be a little bit less direct now. Taking the target man out of this lineup means we don't have to thump it long as much as we were. As on cue, Masali Hansen plays an aimless ball behind their defence. And now we're having to try and win the ball back again. This is a long highlight, which often means you're going to get a good chance. And I think we've got Hartvigsen in. And he struck the post, but he's quick enough to get on there. God, I thought his reactions were a little bit slow there. I thought the goalie was going to get up and claim the ball. But we've hit the bar and hit the post. And our little Jonas Hartvigsen has got us into the lead. And having said how we're less direct now, there we go, thumping the ball over the top. It's a decent finish, the first one. It's rolled across the goal line. Keeper's had a go. Hartvigson is celebrating before he even kicks it over the line. And the XG is looking a little bit better after that chance. And we're into half time, I think. We're going to tell the boys we expect a little bit more in the second half. I'd like another goal. Maybe two. Okay, we're underway again. Back-to-back -back wins would mean a lot to us if we could see this game out. And I reckon, you know, maybe with this half an hour to go, we might switch Hartvigsen out to the left and maybe give little Tiny a little run out for half an hour as well. If we do that, Shurnison's the player that's going to be coming off. So let's see whether he can save his position. He's in. And that's not really going to help his cause, is it? It's Neza. He's... Lumped an aimless ball over to their goalie, who's... don't know what he's up to there. He seems to be throwing it to himself. It's another long highlight, and we saw that ended in a goal last time. And now they've got in. Do not hack him down. Of course you've hacked him down. And we've given away, I think that's four penalties so far this season, and we're not playing get stuck in. Let's get the berate shout ready, shall we? And let's fire it out now. So now... We're drawing 1-1 with the bottom team in the division because we've given away yet another penalty. A feature of our defeats this season. Oh, and that one has slipped through Pedersen's hands. Okay, now we're making the change then. So, Shurnison has been pretty poor. I think we swap Hartvigsen out to the wing. We could bring on little Chrissy Nuts who... Has played a couple of games for us this season and done all right. But I think Emperor is the man we'll go with. But not as a target man. 
We're going to play Little Emperor as the advance forward. His acceleration is probably not good enough for it. But otherwise, we'll tend to go very airily long if we play him as an attacking target man. So let's try him as the advance forward. He has got a goal in this role this season. And of course, he's still going to be a huge threat in the air. And it also means we've still got Hartvigs and can cut in from that left-hand side. And maybe get on the end of something. And Gerser has drifted in from his wing. And he has got yet another goal for us. I think he could be up to possibly five goals maybe. I missed it on the commentary. He's done all right. And is Emper the man that we can give credit to there for winning the ball in the box? Laying it back to Nessa who has got some making up to do after his reckless challenge in the area. And let's demand more. So we want a third goal. Here we go. Tony Berg drifts one in. We've got a penalty now. Let's change this. Because our best penalty taker is Ola Christian Jensen, but he's missed his last two. So we gave the last one before that to Hugo Emper, and he scored it, and he looks fired up. So let's give little Emps the chance to get his third of the season, and this would be his second penalty, in the last couple of games. Do not let me down, Hugo. Come on, Hugo. Ah, oh, top corner from Hugo. And now we're 3-1 up. That looks a bit more convincing. We can also drop the mentality. Go less direct. Drop the tempo. And that was a good penalty. And I think we actually need to change it now to make Hugo... Our permanent penalty taker when he's on the pitch, I also think. Okay, we are back. We have made some tweaks. Bought on some fresh legs. But a goal now is going to make things a little bit more nervous. Can we win it back in counter? Oh, well, we can't. And now Lloyd for Gurley has got them back into the game. And I think we might need to tweak this around a little bit because... We're now hanging on against the team that is bottom of the table. We're going to make some little changes, try and stiffen things up a little bit. Then we'll be back well, for the final seven minutes of the game. OK, no time for pride then. We've given away that second goal. Really, our players on the edge of the box are a bit slow getting out to it. And oh, the player who scored is absolutely tiny. And Emperor is six foot seven. How tall is this guy? And he's beating Emperor in the air. For Gurley? I mean, please, Emperor, you are six foot seven. This guy's five foot three. Five foot three. And he's beating Emperor in the air. Oh, yes, he scored a penalty, but I've told you. He doesn't play that well and he doesn't contribute a lot. And now he's losing out in the air to someone who's five foot three. We've got the full time wasting on now. And we're actually going to change the instructions, go even shorter and even lower tempo. And can Bergie bail us out? He can't. He's drifted his free kick just wide. We've got three minutes of injury time to hold on. I think we've done it. We have. We've snagged another three points. Emper. He's sitting there on a 7.3. I think he should be ashamed of himself that he's been beaten in the air. I think we're going to say, going to go hands in pockets. We'll give them a hmm, well done. All right, we scored three goals. We're now up to 18 points. We're only three off the playoffs. And that stretches the gap between us and Brian to a nice five points. But... Hugo Emper, I mean, really. I felt he could have done a little bit better on that goal than he did. We'll watch it one more time. Am I being a little bit too harsh on him? Was he outdone by some sharp-witted movement, perhaps? I don't know. Let's watch as the ball comes in. He's jumped. He's up in the air. And he's just beaten. He's beaten by a man who is five foot three. All right, we've got thinking to do. Well, at least that means, look, we're now closer to the promotion playoff places than we are the relegation playoff places. That's the position we want to be in. And we've now played a couple of games with this new formation. 
We've scored goals in both. We've won them both. I'm going to persist with it for a little bit. I'm going to go offline, play a few more games, and we're going to come back and see whether maybe we could have just squeezed our way into those promotion hunting places in Sub-Zero Hero.